All right, guys, I am here at Adepticon 2016 with Mark Gibbons one of the most familiar artists uh, if you've done anything revolving tabletop or computer gaming in the past 10 to 15 years. So Mark, it's great to be here, man. Thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, it's a pleasure. For those of, uh, those of the audience out there that may not know about you so much, can you give us a quick history of kind of where you have been and where your art has been? <laughs> the things I've done, <laughs> Everything. the things I've seen. Uh, I, I started off, um, uh, I started off in the ga getting into the games industry, with, really with Games Workshop back in, man, really the end of the 80s. I did my first couple of pieces for them as a freelance. Uh, and then I joined the studio as a full-time artist in 92, um, working on Warhammer, I guess, fourth edition, and then wow. the second edition of 40K. So I was with them for, uh, well, actually, for about 20 years off. We've had this, this sort of off and on love, love hate relationship. Yeah. So I keep going back there, you know, I, my, I can't quit them. I'm my first girlfriend, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but after about, um, and I think 96, that's sort of the launch of, I guess, the birth of the PlayStation age. Yeah. Uh, I, I started playing video games like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil, and yeah. I thought, oh, actually, something like myself might get some work in this in this industry yeah so I yeah I, I jumped away from tabletop uh, and started working in video games uh, 10 10 years later here I am here yeah. I am back again in tabletop uh, video games is great I spent a lot of time seven years at, uh, at Blizzard yeah uh, doing concept art for World of Warcraft and uh, Diablo a little bit of Starcraft too a couple of years at Riot Games working on the, uh, the background world for League of Legends um, and then last year, I decided to go freelance again. And after a month of sitting around in my underwear wondering what I was going to do with myself, I got a call from Andy Chambers. Hey, I made a game. We need an artist. Do you want to, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Uh, so that's how Dark Deeds came about. Um, Very cool. Really, really intense sort of three months work. Uh, because I ended up doing all the art, not just the illustration stuff, but the, the layouts for the cards, all the buttons, all the icons, uh, even laying out the text on the cards. So it became a labor of love. Was, uh, was this the first project where you had nearly complete control over every aspect of how this thing turned out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to do this, I keep, there's a phrase I keep using when people ask me about it. I said, um, <clears throat> I got fed up of uh, all my children calling someone else daddy. <laughs> So I thought, I'll try and raise a couple on my own. Yeah. See what kind of juvenile delinquents I end up with. Oh, that's so, so it's, cool. although, although the, the, both the tabletop and the video game industry have been very good to me over the years, yeah. I really felt, I reached a point in my career where I wanted to do something uh, just for myself or just, you know, independent. And this is amazing. This is really the first time that you have your hands completely on all of the assets yeah. here going on. So yeah. what was that process like? Was it more challenging? Was it liberating? Liberating. Um, I had no art. I was the art director. I had no art director yeah. to answer to. Uh, Sam from Games and Gears was, uh, I guess, my well, my publisher certainly, and I guess my producer. But because uh, of, the, of the nature, there's only four of us that made this: Andy Chambers, Ryan Miller, Gibbs the designer, uh, myself, and Sam. Uh, yeah, I could swear at Sam, uh, call him all the names I felt I needed to call him <laughs> without fear of consequence. Yeah, which is a rare thing. <laughs> Uh, well, it's actually very liberating and very. You end up, it's, you end up with a great sense of camaraderie because you are all in this together. Yeah. You know, we stand or fall based on the strength of what we do, and the passion for it is, is kind of carried us through this, this last, I guess, six months or so now since we first started working on it. Well, what's the style of Dark Deeds? What kind of a feeling are you trying to create with this uh, project? Uh, it's 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 darkly humorous. We talked about uh, initially, uh, like like Python esque. Yeah. Uh, stuff like uh, uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail, yeah. stuff of the Life of Brian. Stuff that's sort of irreverent, ha has a sort of a, a sort of historical bent to it, but it's 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 a fantasy stuff. There's elements of sort of Terry Pratchett's Ang Ang more pork in terms yeah. of the city and the, and the convoluted, strange characters that you encounter throughout the game. Um, so we wanted to make it very playful because it's a fun a, a fun game. We wanted to step away from the from the grim dark. Yeah, you know it's still dark. Yeah. But the grim is, is is more more light, more humorous. Very very yeah. cool. Well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the history here because I think you offer a lot to just artists out there that are watching and even just art in general when it comes to tabletop and video games. Right. You've been doing this for a long time. Thirty years. Thirty. Man years. and boy. So 
What, an old man now. What's it been like seeing, like, this is all transition. I mean, you've been in here for so long. What have the transitions been? You've gone from not only just drawing sketches to, like, digital art. Yeah. But you've seen video games evolve. You've seen tabletop games evolve. Uh, tell us, what you got any insight into that? Like, what's it like? What is what has really been changing? And it, you know, it's a, it's 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 unpredictable. I think is the one thing. You know, the the ebbs and flows and video. The pop. I mean, video games obviously hugely popular and, and will continue to be. With the, I mean, the last couple of years, the the, uh, the the massive growth in mobile gaming, you know, yeah. and app gaming. That yeah. that's been amazing because it got to a point where. When I started in the industry, uh, you know, it, I, I, I went to school with a couple of guys that developed games for the Spectrum and the Commodore, and it's like 15-year-old guys wow. in the bedroom making games. I'm making big bucks, you know. Yeah. The rest of us had like paper routes. <laughs> These guys were selling thousands of copies of games. And then the industry grew, and the PlayStation uh, uh, and, and the Xbox and everything else. Suddenly then it was all about big studios, yeah. and making games was expensive. Yeah. Now it's come back, no, you can, again, you can make app games with a couple of guys. So you've seen that cottage industry take over. Yeah. Uh, what's been amazing for me um, over the last couple of years is I've seen uh, uh, a resurgence in tabletop gaming, board gaming. There's a real renaissance in that now. People yeah. want social gaming, but they don't necessarily want to dive into the uh, tempestuous waters of online gaming and online communities, which yeah. can be, you know, Pretty hostile. You know, I've worked at Riot for a couple of years, so the League of Legends, bless them, bless those passionate people out there. But man, man, they can be, they can be brutal. Yeah. People, I think, are less inclined to do that when you sat across a table playing, playing a game with them. So for me, getting back to tabletop was again like kind of getting back to a, a first love. Yeah. Um, so I've really enjoyed that. That's uh, that's been a lot of fun. Have, have you seen any grand uh, changes due to like Kickstarter and Patreon and these kinds of things? That uh, that's been amazing too. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's I, I guess throughout all the all the creative industries, not just games now, where creators uh, uh, have that direct contact uh, with their with their players, right, with their with their fans, with the supporters. And you feel, as a supporter of, of, on Kickstarter, on, on Patreon, you're 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 directly investing. Yeah. You know, your 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 hard-earned money is going to the people that you want it to go to. Yeah. Uh, that seems really exciting, really liberating. Yeah. So yeah, I've backed a bunch of Kickstarter. Very cool. Be fantastic. Well. I have to ask the last question, I think, is if there's freelance artists, which there are plenty of out there watching, and even yeah. just designers and creatives out there that want to be in this industry, both computer and tabletop, and you're here and you've done it, what would you say to them uh, to kind of get them involved or some advice that you might give them to uh, give them a leg up? Um, I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's knowing, knowing yourself, knowing what you, you want to do, and not being afraid to specialize, you know, not being afraid to, to maximize yeah. on, on the things you're good at and the things that excite you the most. Because you, you, often, I, I mean, I've reviewed hundreds and hundreds of portfolios from, from artists uh, over the years. And, and, and the artists that do, that do the best are the ones that are really passionate and then that passion comes through in the work. And they've tailored their portfolio to the gig that they really want, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I always say, don't, yeah, don't, don't try to cover all the bases. Don't try to be all things to all people. You know, if you're a great character artist and you like doing manga style, do manga style. Be the best manga artist you can be. If you like environment paintings, if you like mood landscapes, do those and be great at those. Because the size of the industry now is such that, uh, you know, you can get in individual uh, specialist roles like that. It's not about being a generalist anymore. Yeah. Not really. It's about it's about honing your, your really your specific skills into the, into the area that you're best at. You Very know, good. That's, that's the advice I would give. Well, hey, Mark, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Dark Great Deeds looks incredible. You. Thank you we so much. We cannot wait to play it. This has been Mark Gibbons, uh, one of the quintessential artists of our time. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We got more coming from Adepticon 2016.